Hey Roger, me so same same. What up everyone? There we go. Let's talk. Let's talk. Are you calling me, love? Am I calling you now? What's up? Oh, you just went live? I did, yes. Doesn't matter. What up, people? How you doing? Go on. Mm-hmm. Any? I'm here talking about sexism and misogyny, and yeah, I'm sending you to get me tea. That's bad. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? What's up? Let's talk. Listen, let's talk. A lot's happening. A lot's happening. Today we're not talking politics. Tandy, are either you're waving? To, are you doing the wave for me, or are you doing the ginger? I don't know anymore. When, whenever I go live and I see this, I'm seeing ginger. Um, the bullet train chemise is in the house, I guess. What up, people? How's everyone doing? Blah, Vuzi. Goma Benson, Madina, how you doing? Sam, how you doing? Mike, how you doing? Bianca, Brian, Tandy, Tapi, I see everybody. How you guys doing? Claire, how you doing? Listen. Um, yo, Mia, how you doing? Any more, how you doing? Listen, guys, what's up? So today we're talking, um, today we're talking, we're talking a very sensitive subject. We're talking a very sensitive subject. See, I, I, I woke up this morning and I saw, um, I, there's a message from my Mzuguru Bren, uh, Bren Mupa, um, and, and it was a voice note. Uh, it was a voice note from, um, a leaked voice note uh, by, by, by Brother Blacks. Uh, Vusa Blacks and, and and the voice note was um, the voice note is kind of disturbing. Um, I heard the voice note this morning and it was extremely disturbing to hear, uh, especially from one of my friends um, who, who I know better. And and and, and so I, I heard this really really crazy um, crazy voice note. Uh, and so I sort of try to trace back what happened, try and understand. The context in which this voice note was sent. Can anyone just jump in? Um, now, 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 full disclosure is the, the first thing I must say is that um, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm, I'm a son. I mean, I shout out to my mother, Beatrice Ndoro, who's just come on, online. Um, so I, I have mothers. Um, I, I'm a husband. You know, um, I have a wife I love dearly. I, I'm a father of two daughters. Um, one of my young daughters really loves the, the, the arts she loves singing and so forth she's very smart she loves acting and so forth uh, and, and I'm also a brother to, 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 to some sisters so, so today so, so I thought let me, let me have a look at, at, at this at what Amanda had to say about the film industry so I uh, so I, so I sort of, I, I, just, I, I went and checked out the Zimbo Live TV uh, video of what Amanda was saying about the film, uh, the film industry. Now, uh, if you watch some of the videos I've worked on, uh, I'll give you an example. If you watch the video for, uh, I directed the video for Titan Dipe Moyo, okay? Now, it, the, the video for Dipe Moyo is set in a hospital and it has two, two of the young ladies from Wenera in the cast. Um, one his name is Pride and I forgot the other lady's name. Uh, two young ladies from Blaue. Um And they... They live at the Wenera house in Greendale. So when I heard the things that, um, that Amanda was saying, okay, something happened in the sense that a lot of bells started ringing in my head. Ding, 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 ding. And these bells were because nothing that, um, nothing that Amanda was saying was a surprise to me. Now, the music industry and the film industry and the arts industry are very interconnected. Uh, you know, I'm a number award winning director. I remember I directed Chang Chi Chang Amiri and a few different other things. So I've hung out with a bunch of these guys before. So nothing that Amanda was saying was surprising to me. What made me feel really bad was that I feel like as a, as a participant in the, in the arts industry in Zimbabwe, I have become complicit I have become very complicit 
in some of these um in some of these things that happen which everybody sort of knows is happening but nobody speaks out against hey olinda how are you doing i hope i can add you just now cool so it took me back so i, I want you to bear with me please i i i, I i'm gonna take up too much of your time i want you to bear with me so i was i went to prince edward school and at prince edward school um a lot of my friends like people like carl joshua and Nube and them can, can, can testify that at prince edward school we all knew of the abuse sexual and physical abuse of young boys by a certain breed of teachers and groups okay we all knew about it right now the reason why we didn't speak up against when we knew that some young people were being sexually abused at Prince Edward School. Now, what I'm saying here, it, 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 affect, it, it affects a lot of people. So I'm not going to say names. What I, what I am going to do is I'm going to let you guys understand this. That if I was braver as a younger man at Prince Edward School, I could have stopped the sexual abuse and harassment of many, many young boys who then came after me. It took my mother... Now, this is, this, this is where this, the story gets kind of crazy. My mother, Sylvia Musasiwa, became a teacher at Prince Edward School. And she was a counselor, one of the counselors for the boys. Okay. And it took my mother, when I was now in the UK at university, it took my mother to bring down it's one of the most serious rings of pedophiles and, 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 and sexual abuse that was happening at a school that I used to love. Now, the reason why a lot of people like me did not speak up at Prince Edward was because, first of all, you want to make the first teams, you want to join, you want to become, um, you, want, you, 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 want, you want to become a prefect, you want to sort of fit into the status quo. Now, you find me, any Prince Edward boy right now, circa 1998 and below, who did not know that there was systematic sexual abuse to young boys at Prince Edward. I'll wait. We all knew what was going on, and by our silence, we were complicit in the sexual harassment and the sexual abuse of young boys at Prince Edward School. This is a fact, okay? Now, I, the thing is, when I've said this in public before, other boys from other schools have said, you know what, shit, it's actually true as well that in our hostels, um, the same things was happening. It doesn't matter whether it's Alan Wilson. It doesn't matter if it's Alice Robbins. It doesn't matter. It's just we all knew of systematic. <laughs> and when I say systematic, I mean it goes all the way to the top. The cover-ups went all the way to the top. And my mother, well, see the thing is, I only discovered this when my mother, who then started pre teaching at the school that I went to, came to the UK and then explained to me this huge ring of pedophiles they were, they were coming through as exchange students they were coming through as teachers they were teaching weird new the arts and music and debate all that kind of shit and these were the guys who were who, who were sexually abusing a bunch of boys and it took a couple of young brave boys to then step up uh, who told my mother some of these things and then my mother went ape shit and then pretty much brought down a whole ring I think eventually speaking the whole ring including the top guy were culled from the school Unfortunately, because this school was the gem, the jewel of the government schools, unfortunately, because of that, the scandal never made the papers. You know, there, there, was, a lot of, there was a lot of things that were covered up um, because you didn't want the, the gem of the schools, Prince Edward, being this school with, with, with people being sexually abused. Okay? Now, I was never a victim of sexual abuse. I, I, I may have been lucky. Uh, maybe I wasn't good looking enough. I don't know. But what I'm telling you now is that there was actual systematic uh, sexual abuse of Prince Edward in my generation, which is around 1996 and below. I started in 1993 to 1996. I started there from three up to form up, up to upper six. Okay, I was a gateway before. I left gateway, went to Prince Edward, and the Prince Edward, I discovered a whole a whole system that was in place of silence. Number one, a whole system of hush. And no one says this, but everyone in the back, in the corridors used to whisper and say these things. So we all knew that this was actually happening. Okay. I want to ask that you not sit here. I want to listen. No, I know, but you can listen on, the, on your live. Uh, the, the, the wife wants to sit. She, she, I, I, I won't be able to concentrate. 
fine. Go, go, go watch me somewhere else. All right, baby. So, so, so what actually happened? Uh, thank you to my wife. She just bought me some tea. You know, she, you know, she, she, she knows I love tea. So, the reason why today when Brent sent me that message by, by blacks, it sort of brought all those emotions and feelings back. Because we all knew about the systematic abuse of young boys at Prince Edward. Okay? Uh, number two. The reason why people like me, even at Prince Edward, we were very vocal. I mean, me, uh, Carl Joshua and Nube were editors of the Prince Edward School Times. Was called Sorry, someone is calling me. Um, the reason why a lot of us were... I need you to call, tell Shami to stop calling my phone, please, because she's keep disrupting the feed. They say, could I call you back just now? The reason why people like me didn't... Uh, sorry, guys, someone keeps calling my phone and disrupting the feed. The reason why people like me, didn't stand up and speak about the sexual abuse uh, that was happening at Prince Edward School in my era is because, first of all, we didn't want to, um, we didn't want to jeopardize our own chances at privilege. We didn't want to not become prefects or whatever else. Number two, you didn't want to be isolated and become the guy who brings down the school because there's a very strong sense of tradition and pride in the school. Now, a lot of my friends who are still very, very, very into the whole where Prince Edward, maroon and green will be very upset with me for saying what I'm saying right now because some people are still stuck in the time warp because some people at Prince Edward was the best time of their life so they've never moved past it however for me, I mean, I ended up going to university City University was far more exciting when I left there, my work experience in London so I, I can, I've, I've detached myself from the school but I can tell you now that there was a big, big code of silence at Prince Edward and if you ask any of the boys who were there in my era we all knew we all knew. We all knew who the gay teachers were. We all knew the teachers were buggering boys. We all knew the little boys who were being, who were being moved around in cars at night and having, who could call the teachers by name. We all knew the young kids in drama who were being abused. We all knew it. We all knew it. But we all were complicit and didn't say anything. And like I said, it took my mother about seven, eight years later teaching at the same school I went to to, to actually unravel. That whole pedophile ring that happened. Now, I don't know if it still exists, but I do know that at that point in time, that whole ring of pedophiles and, and abuse for these young boys stopped immediately. Okay, so now, let's move forward. We, 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 we get to a space now where we are older. Okay? There, there, there was an opportunity for my wife to go work at an organization a government organization, um, which is a parastatal. And she was offered this position. Uh, my wife, very intelligent, smart, articulate. And I was in the room and she said, fuck no, I'm not going to go work for that particular organization. Because the particular head of that organization is well known for the way he treats young girls in his, in his grasp. Now, this is obviously because of... Um, there, there was an affinity to the Miss Zim world or some shit. There was a lot of things going on, but th there's a particular, there's a couple of particular big heads of industry in Zimbabwe where we know, we actually know, okay, that they systematically abuse young women for the purpose of saying these young women, if you want to go further in this pageant or whatever, you have to sleep with this particular boss or this particular chief, okay? Now, all the models I've ever known, and remember, because I'm in the advertising industry, I've dealt with a lot of young models and so forth. They also know about who the names of these men are. Okay? They know them systematically by name. The name of these men who regularly abuse their power and their privilege to abuse young women who are yearning for grafts, yearning for positions in pageants, yearning for different accolades and so on and so forth. So this is well known, okay? But again, let me let me let me let me let me let me dig a little bit deeper. Okay? In the music industry, there are a lot of young women. I mean, due to the big proliferation of things like Britain's Got Talent and all these kind of things, you need to understand that a lot of young people aspire to be superstars. 
We are living in that digital age where everybody with a good voice can break and make a million views and suddenly become a super night sensation, okay? So there's a big, our young children grow up wanting to be musicians, singers, rappers, and so forth. Now, I will speak personally from a, as a rap hip-hop producer because I produced a lot of rip-hop records. And there are a lot of young women who want to be rappers. Now, in our industry, now, it's a, and it's a tiny industry compared to Sungura and others. Yeah, it's fucking tiny, right? In not even in our little industry, there's this notion called beats for beats. Okay? Beat for beats. Beat for beats. So if you let me beat, I'll give you a beat. There was a big, it's a big thing. Now, it's, a, it's an ongoing joke. It's an ongoing joke, but it's not a funny joke. Because it actually perpetuates another systemic usage of saying right. If you're a young female rapper and you want a hip-hop beat by this world-renowned producer or this award-winning producer, you're going to have to sleep with them first. It's almost an unwritten rule. And, 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 this lack of, and the thing is, I speak as an elder in the hip-hop industry to say my complicity is that I found this shit funny, I don't know, whatever. I, I, I never took it seriously. And I think this morning a lot of things hit home. And it takes a lot of people like me to not say anything. It, it, we just don't say anything. That these things then further perpetuate and become crazy. Now I know Vusa Blacks well. You know I worked on, I worked with them on, 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 on Titan's video for um, I think we did he, he helped us with Penge Penge. Um, I think Vusa Blacks helped us with Excuse Me, Adrian Tate, another big 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 video. Uh Nate. I mean, he's been a comrade. So what you don't do is at this point you don't dissociate yourself from comrades uh, and, and, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't throw them under the bus. What you must do is the first thing that I did this morning was I called him up and I said, my brother, what, this fucking, this, this is not, this is not you. Why, why would you, now, whatever justifications you try to say, like, look, you know what, we fucking, it's in a group and you're with a bunch of lads and you're being hysterical and you're being silly and all these kind of things. But then he said, you know, my nigga, I'm really sorry. Like, I've, I've, I've got to a stage now where my Facebook is blowing up and I regret what I'm saying. My sisters are not happy with me. And like, I, I, if I knew that other people were hearing this, I would never have said this. He said, I'm going to put an apology and I thank you for reaching out. And he put up an apology, right? But listen to me now. What he said to me about, what, what struck me the most was when he said to me, if I had known that, no one was go that anyone was going to hear this, I wouldn't have said this. This is when I thought, oh shit. So how much, how many things are like this that I also don't say because I'm afraid to say them because people are hearing them. And what do I say in public? And what do I say in private? How do I feel in public? How do I feel in private? You see, because in private, all the Prince Edward boys can sit there and we can actually agree on, we know the names of the teachers who are buggering little boys at Prince Edward. We know them. We know their names. Okay? That's in private. But in public, I've never said it before. I've never said it before. In the music and the arts industry, I know the people who are I know the people who abuse their who abuse their positions to, to take advantage of younger women. Young women who are who are just aspiring to be young rappers, young singers, and so I know them. I know them by name. In private, we laugh about it. And I say laugh about it actually as in like, <laughs> shit man, hey, that poor chick, she's going to go deal with that nigga. Oh gosh, I'm going to talk about beans. We say, we say it like it's a joke. We say it like it's a joke. In public, we don't. You see, Zimbabwe, when a member of Job Praises Band came out and was brave enough to name names, name situations, times and places, she was attacked vehemently, aggressively, not by men, by the way, but by women. I repeat, when a member of the biggest pop star in this country, of their band, when she came out and she told you what was happening to her, the women tore her to fucking pieces. 
Now I know she I know her. she's struggling out there. She she hasn't had any opportunity to she she can't she can't even make a record. She she can barely get on TV. You know? How dare you go against the army mascot? How dare you? Go against the, the, the pride of the nation, the guy who's writing the, the, the theme music for the revolution. You see, I see all you women liking what I'm saying. How many of you have that artist's music on your phones? See, it's all good for you to attack blacks right now. I get it. He's an easy target. But how many of you are dancing to Jindabata right now? Go on, I'll wait. It's in your fucking playlists. And I'm not saying this so I can throw people under the bus. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about things that are in the public domain. Okay? Things that are in the public domain. What I'm saying, Marcy, so that you understand what I'm saying is that Vusa Blacks is not alone. Vusa Blacks said a fucked up thing on a voice note that leaked. What about when Gonyet, not Gonyet, where do we are? What about when Gonyet came out and says, I have been sex systematically sexually abused in the band. I have been systematically sexually abused in the band. They held back my, um, they held back my money. They held back my, they, they, they didn't take me to shows because I refused to give sexual favors to the boss of the band. What happened to the boss of the band? What happened to the boss of the band? He continues to win accolades every single day and he continues to populate your phones with all of his tunes. Now, all I'm saying, I'm not even saying take a word for it, but at least as a population, let's at least interrogate and see some of the systematic problems that we're, that we're, that, that we're facing as a generation. How can we then crucify that young woman who said this is happening without, b before we've even had an opportunity to understand what's happening? Why are we slut shaming her? Whatever. She was slut shamed to death. That's, that's a mother. That's a, that's a young woman. She, she was killed online. She was crucified. And the biggest perpetuators of the crucifixion were women. Guys. No, no lie. No lie. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. To something very, very personal and close to my heart. I would like you ladies to take a moment to go on to Fadzai in my head as Twitter timeline. Take a moment. Go on to Fadzai in my head as Twitter timeline. And I want you to read. I want you guys to read some of the comments, some of the comments that are said to Fadzai Mahere every single day by Zimbabwean men. These are men in your homes, your husbands, your brothers, your, your sons. I want you to go and read. In fact, if you want, if you want to do an experiment, go on Google, for example. And Google Fadzai Mahere and a word like Tzotskwa Beans. I, I want you to just Google some of that stuff. The amount of time she's crucified about why are you not married? All these kind of things. I want you ladies to please, please, please do that for me. If you have a moment in time. Then you will start to realize that, oh my God, this is not just the movie industry. It's not just the music industry. It's not just in the school. It's online, on our Twitter feeds. Friends of ours, people we say are our friends, say the most horrible things to Fadzai Meher. They say the most things. So, so Marcy is asking me, what, what, so what are men doing? What have men done to... You know what, Marcy, what I'm saying is this. I'm not trying to put a blame game. And the thing is, when we start talking like this now, we're blaming each other. I don't want to blame each other. What I want to show you is that men are being assholes to Fadzai Meher right now on Twitter. Right? And women sometimes like the comments. It's very rare that a woman stands up and says, hold up, her marital status shouldn't matter. Right? You, should, you shouldn't have a right to say that. Why are you constantly crucifying her about her father? What about her mother? Well, we have this weird patriarchal system in which women can be crucified in front of us and we say fuck all. We say bugger all, guys. 
We say bugger all. People who support national N Nelson Chamisa, uh, I'll add you in a second, OC. In fact, I'm going to add you, but don't speak. I'll add you. People who support Nelson Chamisa, like me, should not feel that is necessary, okay, to agree to let Makupe be called a whore online. That's somebody's mother, for God's sake. That's somebody's wife. Okay? Koko Zani Kupe, whether we like her or not, is somebody's mother, somebody's wife. Right? And yet, today alone online, she's been called a whore, a hure, a bitch, a million times. Now, I remember getting attacked when I, when, when Grace Mugabe was going around these rallies, going around these rallies, and being crazy, and Grace Mugabe was crazy, bad shit crazy. And I kept saying, guys, as men, are we happy that this mother, this wife of somebody, whether we like her or not, is constantly being called a hure, is constantly being called a bitch, a slut by people, including by people like, people like Chris Mutangwa. These are, these are important, influential members of government. Who, who can say, call her a hure, uh, this woman who was in the typing pool and then take plucked up by a very powerful man. In fact, the most powerful man in our country to be made into a wife. We called her a hure. Now, as crazy as she is, was, was that good for us as a generation to quit calling her a whore? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we all have a lot of social security. <coughs> Olinda Chapel, how are you, my sister? Sorry for ranting. Good afternoon. Please. Good afternoon, Kuda. It's it's great to see you vent, and you know, being a father to a daughter, you know exactly how this is gonna pan out. So you have to be protective of your own. Um, if anybody can say is a poster girl of being bashed by a lot of men or being trolled by a lot of men and not being supportive, I think I was the 2017 poster girl for this. Kuda, you've been on my Facebook account. You've seen my, my block list. Yeah. Oh, what Linda, happened? You need to get better internet. Are you there? Are you on Wi-Fi, Linda? Because we, 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 we are losing. I, we I on am. Hold on. Let me put this on Wi-Fi. Hold on. Uh, cool. Cool. My apologies, I'm back. I put it on Wi-Fi. Could I was asking you a question. Um, yeah. You've been on my yeah. block list. And how many people live on my block list? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there was over, I don't know, 50,000. I think it's crazy. Yeah. And 98% of the people that are actually on my block list, it's men. It's men that are constantly right. bashing me for speaking out against somebody that was being abusive towards me. It's men, because right. in all facts. And I believe, unfortunately, there's so many parts that I've touched in life where our whole country as a nation is completely on mute when it comes to abuse. It's not just about what happens, Prince yeah. Edward. It's not just about what happens, Kunafa Zai. It's not about what happens, Kuna Olinda. It's not about what happens, Kuna Amanda. We, we came and we talked about young girls in Epworth, right? That are being paid 50 cents per person or 50 cents a round. You were there, Kuna. You can vouch for me. You heard these girls and their stories on a one-to-one -one basis. And they say that most, most of their customers were big-bellied men in fancy cars that drove all the way out to Epworth, right? To go and yeah. sexually exploit these young girls. Not in the sense of, yeah. I'm this big bellied CEO of a company, I drive a nice car, let me educate this girl child. Instead, they think it is correct for the, to take their big bellied self and go and put all that weight on top of a nine-year-old. On a oh, child. Peter, I'm sorry, of a nine-year-old, a child that has got... Fadzai is a grown-ass woman that can even speak her mind and protect herself. 
But we've got cases like nine-year-olds that can't protect themselves. We've got young kids in schools that cannot be protected, right? We are having young girls falling pregnant at, at the age of 15, 16. Instead of re-educating those young girls, putting ba them back to school. Right? Yeah. So I think all in all, right, before we even talk about the, 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 the musical arts or, or whatever other arts they are, our whole community, our whole society as a whole has got a big problem with pedophilia. It's got a big yep. an unspoken disease. Unfortunately, the people in government will not talk about it because they are the predators. Nine years and paying them 50 cents, right? So yeah. as, a, as a woman, as a mother, I get so shocked. Could, why is it up until now? We could m arrange all these mama chiti gofamba, one million machi, ama imugabe, but yet we cannot organize mama equity. Enough is enough. We will not tolerate pedophilia in our communities anymore. And this is a, yeah. if the authorities are not going to really breathe down, but you'd find that there's all these things and I'm, and I'm not going I'm not even going to talk about Kuti, the government, right? We've got potential presidential candidates, we've got potential members of parliament, we've got potential all this all those people that are trying to campaign for this country, be it MDC, be it ZANU, PFB, whatever, that's how they win our hearts. That's how they win our votes. By actually putting away Jinojakadaiso to say that, you know what, child marriages will not be accepted in Zimbabwe anymore. Ukawunekwakunemkazi are under the age of 18. Urkuenda kujeri. Wacho akakuroza akanakuta akanorora arkuenda kujeri. It, Amen. It, it changes our mindsets and the way we think, right? Like you said when you were at Prince Edward, you guys found this normal because other young boys were being sexually abused. What about the boys before your generations, the ones before your generation, right? That's why you find a lot of people have got a lot of deep-seated issues because they're not being... The people that are supposed to be safeguarding them are the same people that are abusing them. So as a woman and as a person with a voice and a huge platform, I think, well, you know what? Enough is enough. We will not be having this anymore. We will not be sitting by idly. Whether Mukazi, Murume, any person... That has been a mother, a father, an aunt, an uncle. Under the age of 18. They should be screaming for bloody murder. Right? You know, you know, I, I mean, our society OC, has I, I, to stop. I, and the thing is, uh, I, and I, just, I just want to add to what you're saying. Is that there's this, this, this unspoken silence that we have. We, we, yes. know, we know who the pedophiles are. We know, we know the guys who win... They, they are around women, they behave fucked up. We know all these things. And I think as a society, for example, when I'm walking around corporate Zimbabwe and I see and I hear some of the things that are happening, as a person who lived in the UK for 15 years, I can tell you this today. There is a lot of, in fact, 90% of Zimbabwean males in the workforce right now would be in jail in the UK for sexual harassment. Absolutely. Because a woman should be able to come to work, to come to work, and not feel that she's immediately going to be objectified, immediately going to be sexualized, and immediately going to be harassed. She's, it, it, it's almost as if in Zimbabwe we've now abdicated and said, ah, this was native. But I believe that we now need to say, guys, that it's not okay. Right? It's not okay that these because young actors are being forced exactly to Exactly. That, that is my point exactly. It's not okay. That it's, it's not just about Kuti. Vusa said this, or that. Look at the bigger picture. Right? There has to be zero tolerance of any type of abuse whatsoever. 
be it sexual yeah. abuse, be it underage abuse, any type of abuse that is sexually orientated, be it female, be it male, be it underage or be it to a grown woman and a 40 years Aripabasa has to stop. And I feel like our and, our law and our society has not been paying enough attention to that part of, of Mutemo. They have not been, and I'm sure to Mutemo Uriko, but it is not being enforced enough. So we are now... And you know what, Osi? Osi, I mean, uh, I'm going to cut you off a little bit and just say, you know what, just as a point of principle, I must also say that from all some of the abuse that you got last year, some of that abuse actually came from me, okay? And it, it, some of the body shaming came from me. Now, I thought it was ironic because I'm, 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 a, I'm a very big fat bastard. So I was trying to be ironic. I was trying to be witty. I was just being funny. Um, and, and, and so some of the abuse you got last year was actually from people like me. And you and I have obviously have moved past that. We've spoken. We've, uh, we, we've, we've built a family relationship in a sense. And I think it's important that we, you know, there's redemption. People can change. You know, I think it's, it's very important that people can build relationships. Um, it, it, it but, was very easy for but, people to but, know but that I was Tana's friend and so forth. So, either way, abuse is abuse. No matter what form it comes in, abuse is abuse. And I, I agree. Said, you know, we're not going to be accepting this type of nigrini. And what concerns me the most is the fact, Yakuti, when a woman comes and says, I have been abused. And it's like, one woman's voice and how she is accepted and treated from there will allow a thousand more to open up. Right? So, if so Linda, why didn't you, person, why didn't you, why didn't you help uh, Gonya with your big reach when she was being tormented and, and, and slaughtered when she came out against the, her situation at, at um at the job when, when Gonya's why, why, issues why, why, why was, was happening, unfortunately, I still had my own dramas that were happening at that point. So I was still trying to take care of me. But point being is yeah. now you've got this one woman that has spoken out. Why are we as women being the number one people that are trolling Amanda, that Amanda, that are body shaming her, that are saying all these things against her? Are we not supposed to be serious with Penga? There's also other together. victims. There, there's yes. also other victims. Um, the, these, these directors who she's, she's naming and shaming are married men. Their wives are victims. They probably have kids. They, their kids are victims. So the, we need to look at the broad aspect of the amount. Of, there's a lot of victims. In this situation so listen sis i'm gonna please keep watching I, I hope i can bring you back if you want and then i can let some of the other people want to be added come on no problem um but there's a lot of victims so let's keep talking but thank you for joining me sis i always appreciate you. sorry someone else wanted me to uh, to add them so i'm just scrolling down and so see if i can add them but if you can just click add again or just say add I'll, I'll gladly add you um so, 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 so for those who are just joining us, I think it's important to say that we're talking about some of the, the silence issues that we have as Zimbabweans, where we, where we just don't bother to talk about things. We don't bother to, because we, a lot of the times we know what's going on in our country. We know the, the, the people that are, uh, we know the people who are, who are perpetu perpetu perpetuating some of these bad behaviors. So what we are saying is this. As a generation, we now need to say the buck stops with us. We can't just pop up about the politics. The, the politics is part of it. But there's other things that we have to now think about. How is, why is it my daughter Rutendo cannot walk to the shops 500 meters down the road? Because she says, Dad, I can't walk there because as I walk there, I keep getting harassed by the gardeners and the guys, I'm sick or whatever, they get harassed. Well, why is it that my daughter can't walk to the shops? Whereas my sister, when she was young, could walk to the shops. There's a lot of bad things happening in our community, which don't need government to, to involve. It now needs us as the people to say, no, enough is enough. It's not okay. The blesser culture is not okay. The, the, the abuse of young women is not okay. The, the, when young women are brave enough, and you have to understand that for a young woman to stand up against an entire industry, you saw what happened with blacks, right? As soon as this young lady went against directors who blacks probably doesn't even know, he went on the defense, correct? It's a very brave thing for a young woman to come up and say, oh, hold up, this is bullshit, right? I'm, I'm, we're getting abused, we're getting, we're getting misused, right? It's, 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 it's such a terrible place to be 
when you're now being attacked for that position. So I, I think it's important. Okay, let me just add Florida here. So I'm just saying, you know, we're talking about it now, and I guess uh, as a father, as a, as a as a as a man, as a husband, as a as a son, as a as a brother to sisters, I, I just I, I want to speak to you guys. Florida, how are you? Hi, Kuda. How are you? Fantastic. What's, what do you what do you have to say about all this? Oh, okay. I'm currently working for an adult rape clinic here in Harare, so I got this issue like yeah, twenty matter. Because I got the audio power I send a group, I was like, oh my goodness, because this is these are the type of issues we're dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, it's hard every day when people, I'm actually happy, Kuti, people like you are speaking out right now regarding this issue. Nekuti, um, it's a rape culture in Zimbabwe. You, you know, Tangira, the little things, uh, only five years, and we grow up and people think it's okay. Uh, statements that are on uh, Navusa at the end of that audio. Could he, Hans, you want to use your VJ um, to gain publicity and uh, you want to, and what's wrong with the men uh, wanting to just have sex with you? Like they're entitled. And I was trying to blame him. I cursed out at what he said. Then I thought after Jaira, this is how boys talk. This is how men sit on tables or kuma drinks so I told Zanakuti but baby so chichi because our culture has made it okay to have those conversations. And most of these people, Muma Industries are Kataro, and uh, I'm sure very much because I know Vusa is a is a He's a is it a producer or please correct me? Yeah, a videographer, yeah. Yeah. And these are the people I know Dilani never scan Avakawan women look up to them, oh, I can get an opportunity I could break an industry because of this person, Chichi. And then they come out and say that. So imagine how many people we have who are doing the same thing and they are quiet. Have a school taura because they feel like one or threaten or one or so let's not ignore guys. The states are there. We have this clinic by Parengatwa and Every day I have to learn now to deal with these cases and not take them on on, on, on a face view like Rato Jinu Jakuti. It's still the people who are actually infected because of things like this. So you know, we, we, we have to start speaking up against it. And rape culture, I see joke, I see oh no, let's not fight about who is right, who is wrong. Yes, women perpetuated, men perpetuated. Apana munu are exempt. We are all in this. Tese, even comments on social media. How do you speak to victims or um, survivors as sexual violence? Because we are chastised but we are dressing she think perpetuating uh, rape culture and DC Kutom and DC and DC and Denga Toso Tindagasi and Anavusa. So if you're that person, you've been there, you stand and you say, ah, but Munu, you are guilty. You are a Vusa on your own. So, <laughs> and the Vusa Blacks is what is washing with you. So, Ngati Sadaku Blema Vanuanozo Batwa, Ngati Tangire in our conversations with your boys, with your girlfriends. How do you talk about victims where sexual violence or people who come reporting to you could have been assaulted? Don't wait until it's your neighbor or your best friend or your yeah. sister or your daughter to speak up. Let's speak up now. So that's what I just wanted to share with you, Kuda. And I do hope, yeah. Kuti, this starts a big campaign. So so I can't go on. Well, well, my sister, I think... I think, I think what, what, what I was saying to the wife was this: um, as as young women yourselves, is it not time for you guys to actually be more proactive in change? Because, like I said, this it's easy to find a vi a, vi a villain, right? So Vusa can become easily become the villain of the issue, and, and yet the the real villain is the two is the two producers that Amanda mentioned in her in her audio, correct? So. Yes. There's there's other villains. Like I said, in school we had a, we had a culture of keeping quiet when young boys were being abused. Is it not time now for us to actually have serious 
dialogue and you guys actually have a committee that goes and investigates and comes out with a report even after six months well, this is the report we've discovered as far as systematic and, and institutional rape culture that needs to be dealt with i'm going to post links of our own thread Paco. sorry guys someone, someone keeps calling so that sorry, people someone keeps, can someone keeps uh, uh, calling okay younger sticker so I was saying yeah. I'm going to put so, my so, link on the on the screen. Kuchoti van varukuda kutaura they can come in and then we 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 join hands in this campaign because now that we have people vakada yes I don't want uh, Vusa to be a scapegoat for this like I was saying inini I'm talking about the whole rape culture system that is already prevalent in Zimbabwe so that's what we want to attack kuchoti we don't have the next person and the next person at who had taura the same thing. So this is what we want to deal with right now. Second, I'm just going to be posting the link, Ipapa. Then, yeah, we'll talk Kuseri thanks. later on. All right, cool, sharp. Thanks, thanks a lot for it. God bless you. Cheers. Sorry, Floyd, I kept being disrupted because someone keeps calling my phone. It's actually somebody watching this, which is really weird. I don't know why people do that. Uh, but when you call, it disrupts the call. Uh, Alex, I would like to, I'm trying to add you, but then you can't be added. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to add you again. It seems like your phone can't be added, Alex, for some reason. It doesn't have the icon next to it. So I don't know if you want to go out and then come back in and make sure you're watching with the right uh, aspect ratio as well. Um, Cesar, let me try and add you. Again, Cesar, you're also one of the people who I can't seem to add. I'm going to add Marcy here. I'm going to try and add... Okay. Marcy, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So, Masi, uh, uh, sorry, first say what you have to say, then I'll sort of explain where I was going with this. Go ahead. You know what? Uh, it's, it's, there's no right or wrong to, to trying to address this. There's no right or wrong. Olinda is right in the approach that she's mentioned. Um, the Florida is right. You are also right in the issues that you brought. But there seems to be one real caring thing that happens in all this is each time women talk of abuse, each time women talk of abuse, it ends up with either the victim, who is the woman, is blamed, or the other women in the community get all blamed for not supporting a woman. But my question to you, Kuda, when you stand right there where you are standing, are you representing yourself and women, or are you representing yourself and other men? What exactly have you called other men to do? You've called us women to do something. What exactly have you yeah. called the men in our society to do? You're always yeah. so, 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 back so, 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 to women. So, so listen, so listen. I mean, I'm one of the people who, if you go, if you go on my timeline, you need to go and okay. watch. Okay, let's not go, the go on the timeline. Wait, wait. Let's not go on the timeline. Right here in the industry. Right? Have you? You called Sorry. on other guys. Have you called on other guys to to spread this um this news about the Zemura brothers? You know them. You know their names. You know the guys who've been mentioned in this abuse. How come you have failed to mention them? How come you have them by name? Yeah. But the name of Amanda is very easy to come out of your mouth. Why are men calling yeah. on women to band together to work? Why have I not heard you saying Inini as a, a Zim, uh, prominent person, AC Lumumba, I'm calling you as my brother. Yeah. I want you to stand with me against Zimura. I, and you call out Titan. We support your music. We've seen Titan and um, um, Adrian working with, with um, what's his name, with Vusa. Why? When you want us to buy your yeah. CDs, you are okay with women bending in to support you. But I've not heard you calling Titan yeah. or calling Adrian to come and say, brothers, come here. Vusa has aired. Now stand with me and let's caution our brother. Why are you passing the back to women? Can we be real? When we are tackling these issues, let's not... No, but then uh, you, you, have to, you, you, you obviously... You, you obviously stand on your you, ground. You, you obviously have to give me an opportunity. No, no, no. My all, all this is hold on. No, you have, let me you have to also give me an opportunity guy, because you well, are, you're, you're, okay, you're, you're, you're making sweeping statements. Let me um, okay. let's make one statement. 
the, the first post you made after you were contacted about what blacks did was to post an apology that blacks had said. You did not post the three voices. No, I was that tagged. Is, I, I was you were tagged. tagged. You were tagged. But then you've spoken about yeah. his apology. No. Yeah. Have you spoken about the three times that blacks was given an, an opportunity to apologize? So I find that a big okay. I, I can, can I address on that? Can I address that? Help. Can I address that? Can I? I, I, okay. can, I try, can I address All that? Right. Also? Address okay, it. so the way I got to know the, the way I got to know about this was in the morning I got contacted by Bren. Bren yes. contacted me about this and sent me the voice note. My first instinct immediately was to contact Vusa Blacks, which is what I did, and he can verify this. And I gave him the worst fucking bollocking I have given to another man in my entire life. As a mm -hmm. father, as a husband, as a son. And he, I'm his older bro, so I, I speak to him with no no strings attached, okay? Mm -hmm. The next thing he did was then he then put up an apology, okay? As he was putting up an apology, I was then on the phone with Bren, okay? Mm -hmm. From the phone call with Bren, I then went on Zimbo Live TV and I watched the, then I watched the, the Amanda interview. Mm -hmm. From watching the Amanda interview, I have now come here to speak to you guys. So... Literally speaking, I've not had an opportunity to even see some of your comments yesterday. I've not heard the other three comments that he, that Busa has made. What I did here was I did hear about an hour and a half of uh, of Amanda's story on uh, Zimbo Live TV, and mm -hmm. that's what struck me to come on live and say, "No, I understand what she's saying because I know what's happening. I'm a, I've seen it. I've I've gone. I've seen. I know the houses they live in. One of them is on the way to 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 Greendale. I've been there to pick up two actresses for a Titan video." And then my guilt was, am I complicit in perpetuating this bullshit, which is why I came here to talk to you guys. So, yes, you may say that, could I, what have you said to men? I am trying, and I'm not done enough, and I'm trying right now to, to say to my brothers, you know, just like I did with the Grace Mugabe issue, just like I did with the Mai Mujuru issue, just like I did with the Mai, with the Togozani Kupe issue, these women are very unpopular. But at the same time, we don't just then call them whores. We don't call them fambies. Because these are mothers. These are grandmothers. And so forth. So this is my initial attempt to try and say, how do we not just complain about politics, but also complain about some of our own bad behaviors, some of our own cognitive dissonance, some of our own sexist behavior. Which is why when Olinda was talking, I had to admit that I was part of the problem. I also used to troll her and body shame and call her names. I'm trying, I'm trying, as a, it's a self-reflection, my sister. So, in your comments, I was seeing a lot of adversarial talk, and I'm saying it's not No, no, with, on the with, same side. Kuda, you know, me and you, if I was talking to a different brother who was ignorant, I wouldn't mm. challenge him to do anything. I only say this to yeah. you because you are one of the rational men in our community where sisters... Yeah can come to you and we cry and and we we, we we bear ourselves and we say you 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 act for us that is a good thing we are showing that we trust you yeah. enough to come to you and we say kuda you do something if i was talking to my brother i would not even explain whether i was wearing a mini skirt pamusika why this guy touched my bum i would say that guy violated yeah. me and my brother would go and kick us yeah whether I was wearing miniskirt or not. Yeah. And that's how I want to report to you, Kuda. I want to come to you yeah. and say blacks has violated me. And Iwewe, you don't go searching into my past to see who I slept with. I want you to pick yeah. up arms and go fight for a sister. Whether Ndiri Fambi, whether Ndiri Prostitute, whether Ndakayenda Nem Um Wene Um. That's how we come to you, yeah. Kuda. I wish other Zim men could be as open as you know bearing themselves for us to come and blame you i can't blame blacks i yeah. tried to do that yesterday i tried to make my brother realize something he insulted us back he came three times and insulted us and told us that he will continue to use the language that he does with no filter because that is his creative mind that allows him to win awards so i can't talk to blacks yeah. But I can talk to you and yeah. say maybe you understand a different way to speak to this fool. I like Blacks. Yeah. I followed him when he was with Titan and, and uh, Adrian. 
I know the kind of work he does. Yeah. I accept that he's talented. But what I will not tolerate, Kuda, is when he talks to us like fools. And then we get other men coming up and telling us about his talent and then blaming us. That is what I will not tolerate. And if we start going one-on-one -on, -one on what women and men should do to support each other, we can wake up tomorrow and destroy all your fucking talents. Because all those videos, you need us women to come and dance. You need us in your movies. So if Makatanga to start throwing the back at us, we can do the worst to you. So can you pick up the brand on your end? So that when we meet as peers, you can say, Masi, pick up this end of the bucket. Don't just throw everything at me and say, why are women not petitioning? Why are women not doing this? I want to see you calling out all the guys in the industry. By the end of this month, can we have people, you are kissing us. I don't know what these Zimura brothers give you. You are kissing us. Their names must be mentioned. You will still eat because I will support you when they shut you out of business. Don't protect fools. Do not protect fools. I would rather Zim Awards okay, so be the won reason, by respect okay, so the, 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 the reason why I didn't want to throw the Zimura brothers under the bus because they're currently the accused. Um, I was trying to get my head around the facts. So, mm -hmm. for example, I, I hope that Amanda has gone to the police. And if she needs support, people like me are very happy to help support. If she can go and report this and we actually get to the bottom of that, the truth of this, where we get other statements, so that what we don't do is we don't become a knee-jerk reactionary type of people who then... You, you know what happened with the young... What's his name? The young comedian, Aziz, um, who was actually thrown on the bus for no reason because of the Me Too movement going out of hand. And I'm trying to say, we can still have a Me Too movement in Zimbabwe, which is slightly more sane and does not start to throw, because these guys are fathers, they're husbands as well, whatever. So if these allegations are absolutely true, let's, let's, let's put them through not just the court of public opinion, because that's not a good place to, to judge these things. They have to be put, other people have to now come up to the fore. fore. Are other women been, have other women been affected? Can I can I close by asking you? This? Oh, sorry, people, people keep. People. All right. So so what I'm saying is that I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to defend these guys. What I'm saying is that right now we have an accused. Those two gentlemen are accused, and then we have someone who has been brave enough to come and say I am accusing them. Right. So the reason why I'm trying to amplify her accusation and not trying to amplify their names is because I don't know the fact. And I'm trying to also be objective in what I'm saying. However, like you have, not, you have challenged me on this, and I am definitely going to make sure I pick up the phone and call people like Pastor E. Call people like and, e. people with and loud before, men. People and like before, to say, guys, we not need just to be them. participating. Yeah. Not just them. If, if Nelson Chamisa is an advocate, what policies is he championing right now to protect the rights of women? Before you start voting for him, can you test him on this case? Let's see how he changes policy on the abuse of the women child in Zimbabwe. Don't vote for him because you like his face yeah. and you like saying he's an advocate. Let his skills be put to test. Let's see him passing through parliament a policy or an, a guidance note or anything that will force this so we don't start here who could what does he do in parliament which causes does he support which causes before he builds bullet trains he should be fighting for the injustice on the street before you start voting him for bullet trains Absolutely. test him now test him now go and report this case to him now let's see what he does let us see what he does is well, he a credible also, prime minister we want to see what he does we want to see what let's he does see. also with the abuse that because Annie Cooper is receiving online from exactly. the supporters, people who exactly. are calling her a whore and calling her a slut and so forth. We absolutely yeah. need to, to, as men, to stand up against because it's not okay. I think that's my biggest hashtag. It's not okay. It's yeah. not okay but for young women to believe me, that they need blessings to go to university. It's not let okay me let others for come men in, to believe let, that they need power. Let me let, me let others yeah, come no in. Problem. But when men come here, you talk to brothers. Don't talk to us because you make us angry. You either defend us, don't start you, blaming us. I got you. Thank you very much, Marcy. We always enjoy talking to you guys. Um, does anybody else want to be added, please? Mia, where are you at, sister? Are you, are you anywhere close? Uh, I'll try to add Mia before. Then she said she went to the toilet to talk to us, but then she disappeared. 
May I come back? Alex is a Zoo Rockstar. I'm failing to add you, my brother. I don't know what's happening with your phone. I'm failing to add you. Add more. I'm trying to add you. I can't add you. Who else wants to be added currently? Mia, you don't seem to have an icon on your... Okay, there you are. Let me try and add you now. Let me try and add you again, Mia. So, guys, uh, I'm trying to be... It, it, it's very, very easy on these social platforms to name and shame people, okay? Um... So, I'm trying to also be responsible. These gentlemen are, are, are named in public. Uh, they're even in the paper, the Zamora brothers. They've been named and shamed. Um, and I, want, I would like them to also get due process. Because it's easy for, you know, I've just been through a crazy bad divorce and so forth. I know how easy it is in times of anger and also to try and defame each other's names when you're trying to make a point. So at the same time, I was trying to avoid just going in on people I don't know. I was looking far more at the broader picture. I was not looking at, I was not trying to zone in onto one particular issue. I was trying to hone in onto issues that I am more familiar with. So I'm not trying to protect anybody. I was also trying to just be righteous in my approach. Hi. Mia, how are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? Fantastic. Talk to me. What do you think about this issue? Yo, bro, this is a crazy. Hi, everyone. You remember I called you that time and I was asking you for advice on, um, you know, the statute of limitations. Hey, right? yeah, we, we, we try, we're trying to hear you. Are you... Uh, go, go on. Let yep. me hear from you. Right, can you hear me better now? Yeah, we can hear you better. Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Right. Remember the last Hi, go time ahead. I yeah, we can hear you now. The children are if you know about any statute of limitations, Right. And it was regarding yeah. um, a rape, right? I, I yeah. had a conversation with a lady called Sibisai Magombo Clark, and she was raped in Zimbabwe as an eight-year-old child. And then on the same yeah. day, I also had a conversation with a brother called Gary Twala, who was also molested yeah. by a politician, a well-known politician in Blueo, maybe in Zimbabwe as well. Called, he named yeah. him as well, Anand John Komo, right? And then this also yeah. is happening, right? Um, what's going on is really why the re reason why we started the hashtag equity. Know what's happening? Um, there's some people keep complaining about code uh, on on Obemi. I I can't see this person. I don't know how they are on my feed. Um, if they're causing junk, I'm I'm just Obemi. Okay, so this clown needs to go. Okay, so let's get rid of that person. Let's 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 get him out of our conversation because he's causing trouble. Okay, so he's gone. Um, Malume, Malume says, but Amanda is not crazy. So I'm gonna add Malume. Malume, I'm not saying Amanda's crazy. I think Amanda's incredibly brave. I know that she's she's um, I know that she's got serious issues now in the industry. She'll find it harder to get work and so forth. But I I, I believe her, and I, I would love to. I would love to see if she can um, if she can actually get some sort of justice for what's been happening in her life. Me, I'm, I'm trying to re-add you. Somebody obviously called me and then disrupted the feed. Facebook really should fix this uh, ad thing. It's, 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 it's great when it works, but when it doesn't work, it really sucks, eh? Um, okay. Okay, so Mia is now refusing to come on. I'm going to try to add Ceci and keep trying to add Ceci for some reason. Sorry, guys. It's like some, some guys are addable, some are not addable. I just don't know what's happening. Uh, Benson, I'm trying to add you. You're not addable right now. For some reason, you're not addable. Okay, should I just wind up now, guys? I'm, let, me, let me just keep trying to add a couple more people. Seriously, guys, it's now, it's now literally not allowing me to add people for some reason. Um, I'm trying my best. So let me try add one more person. Nope, not adding anybody. Okay. Benson, I'm trying to add you now. No, it like just gives me a little picture. It doesn't say connecting on the side. That's the problem. 
So it's not saying connecting. Safi just requested, let me try some. Okay, Safi is saying adding. So obviously it could be something with time of request or something. I don't know. Not edible. Not edible. Addable. Not edible. Addable. Okay. The person is not answering. Me, let me try and add you one more time. Okay, now you're adding me. Let's, let's go. Hello. Hey, sorry. So you, you spoke about some of these politicians, right? John Mkoma and everything. Go ahead. Keep right. Going. So what's really common in everyone from the day that we started talking about this, right, per life, I get, I kid you not, I get over 20 messages now. In those first two weeks, I was getting over 50 messages. And the story is the narrative is the same, right? That's the reason why I started a hashtag in Onzi, hashtag talk to me. It wasn't to say only women are victims because I can see other people saying, well, men are victims too or something like that. It was so that we can start a dialogue on abuse, any form of abuse to any other person, male or female, right? And right now, this is very interesting because now that is another angle of this topic, Ichibaku industry, entertainment, right? So when we talk, panem woman and inga chiti hands and nasty, why you talking about amanda and my answer is simple just because somebody's having a concert on breast cancer doesn't mean that hiv doesn't matter you cannot go to a right. different you know what i mean today we are spearheading yeah. the amanda story so that we can actually open dialogue on everything to do with abuse right and i am aging and asking everyone anyone they can actually follow through and use that hashtag, hashtag talk to me, hashtag I am Amanda, because we are having these dialogues. Just, we are not trivializing one person for another. We are actually having these conversations. And my, may I just say, I have so much respect for you for having this conversation, first of all, as a public figure and as a male and as a person who has worked closely with this guy and a person who's in the industry. God knows how many people would be looking at you funny right now for having this conversation, but it has to be had anyway. You know, and one other thing that I would like to add to this whole conversation is the fact that let's not always like divert things into something that is, you know, that then takes away from the momentum. Um, the lady I spoke to, Anundi Maguma, and this guy who told, talked about, she was very busy. She narrated her whole ordeal when she was subjected to abuse at eight years old, right? And um, she woke up this morning and said, Mia, I can't find my video. Then they told her about me. And then it reminded me that even though she has talked about it, right, it's just the beginning of this thing. So we suggested that today I'm going to start a group called Talk to Me. Again, it's just called Access Talk to Me. And anyone who wants to admin, even yourself, bro, could ask, because I think that the important thing that we should do when we do this is to have people from all walks of life, right? We can have men, women, people in all parts of the world, quick stuff with each other, really active all the time, so that we can actually push this forward. However, you trust me, I am going to provide the platform for it, and please, let's have this dialogue, because you are helping somebody to heal. Like, um, yeah, on the same subject, right, there is a lady who was actually being kept as a sex slave, right? It was difficult to take that story because guess what a lot of our zimbabwean brothers and sisters are actually being subjected to that but nobody wants to talk about it so please let us talk about it and again i am so sorry to any victim and, and any survivor who is still there you know my message to anyone even when I have to support them, when I have abuse, but anyone who's having to support somebody going through this, right? I want to read this message. It's HOP, H O P E. For me, it stands for Hold On Pain End. Even as a citizen, you're looking at this and you're thinking, whoa, what's going on? Let us just hold on because the pain is going to end. Eventually, we are going to be brave enough to speak up. Or we're going to be brave enough to say, actually, even though I like you, Kuda, even though I like you, Mia, I'm not down with what you've done because you've victimized somebody yeah. else. Yeah. So I had to come and speak, bro, because you know, <laughs> I feel very... But I, I, look, I, I, I appreciate you joining the conversation. Um, it's yeah. a tough conversation. I'm glad that we're having it. So I'll, I'll check you out. Hopefully you go live tonight and we can see what's going on at that point. Yeah. yeah, I am actually going to go live early so that everybody else can be a part of it. I'm going to open the group in the day. I'm going to go live at 5 o'clock today, 5 o'clock UK time, which is 7 o'clock. And please, anybody who wants to be admin on it, let me know. Wherever you are, we want this place to stay active so we can keep talking about it. And, uh, you know, like you're saying, when everybody else, when we're going to 
Maanzichima organizations and propel this forward. Yes, please do that. I will do what I can, which is advocate as much as I can. So, hey, the boss needs me. Cheers, Mia. God, God, God bless. Right. Cheers. So anyway, guys, so I've been having trouble adding people. The Zulu Rockstar, I've been trying to add you. Benson, I would have loved to hear your, your point. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying very hard to add as many people as possible. Uh, Benson, I'm trying to add you now. Uh, it's, it's, it's literally flashing and then disappearing, so it's not saying. So let me, just, let me just sum up. Listen, guys. So we started off this conversation with me narrating and letting you guys know about some of the things that have happened uh, in my life as far as seeing... Um, seeing things and not being able to articulate them because of issues around silence and uh, around uh, the muzzling of, of some of these issues in, in, in this country specifically. Uh, so I, I really, really would like us as a generation to say no to that it's not okay for some of the things that are happening that are endemic in our arts industry, that are happening in industry and commerce, that are happening in government. There's a lot of real issues that are happening right now that as a generation we need to deal with. We don't need one villain. We don't even need two villains. We need to, we need, we need to deal with the entire systematic problem, the, high, the entire institutionalization of the rape culture, the, 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 the abuse culture, what's happening amongst women. You know, um, I, I happen to be a part of a campaign of a young female candidate for Zaymaere. And every day, every single day, if you go into her inbox, if you go onto Twitter, you see the amount of abuse she gets every single day. Uh, people mention talking about her private parts. People talking about why she's not married, why she's not got children at 30, blah, blah. Like she constantly gets abused. And she's being abused by, by these weak, weak males who, who seem to have very low self-esteem by themselves. So they find it easy to attack and, and, and be derogatory and troll women online. And I think as a generation, we just now to say it's not okay. It's not okay for Tokozani Kupe to be called a hoe. It's not okay for Maimu Juru to be called a hoe. It's not okay for Grace Mugabe to be called a hoe. It's not okay. We, we just, it's just not okay anymore, ladies and gentlemen, for us as a generation to accept some of these things and you say, ah, well, it's all good. So we must now hold each other accountable. We must hold each other to the highest standards. You know, I, I, like, like for me personally, the, the the reason why I called Vusa the Black Money was because I, I hold him I hold him to a higher to a higher account, and, and the, the fact that he said sorry to me, well, it, it, you, know, I said you have to say sorry to the victims of what you said, and, and and he's done that. Now it's up to the victims to either accept that or see if they want to torment him some more. I mean that's now up to them, okay. But what I'm saying is that as a generation now, the, I understand why the response has been so vehement and so and so so aggressive. We need to restore our Ubuntu. We need to restore a place where our women can be put onto pedestals and can actually become our mothers and our sisters. People, that as men, we should be proud to protect. You know, we, we should protect our innocence. Like I was telling you, Prince Edward, there's a lot of young boys who are being raped or be, who are being abused at a young age. And we all knew about it somehow. We all joked about it. I mean, if you talk to most Prince Edward boys circa my era, they'll tell you stories and they'll say, yeah, I know, we knew this poor guy was getting buggered by that teacher and we used to see them in the teacher's cars getting taken out, my neighbor, which side out. We, so we all sort of knew what was going on. None of us said anything. So I'm just saying this culture of being quiet, we're letting these things perpetuate and go crazy. You remember that Kenan Banana, for example, he, 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 he was convicted of raping an entire football team of men. And nobody said anything. Do you see? Do you see my point? Where we're now at a weird place in our country where we continually allow pedophiles to dwell amongst our midst, sexual perverts, sexual deviants, and so on and so forth. And I think it's about time that we don't just complain about the politics, about the lack of service delivery. We don't just go. We need to understand the, 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 that we and we tolerate these issues. We tolerate the issues, and then they become real problems. Okay, we now need to, as a generation, say it's not okay. If the buck stops with us, it's not okay. We are not going to be accepting this from each other anymore. It, it, enough is enough. You know, we, we just have to, as a generation, not uh, accept it anymore. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough subject. I'm, I'm a father. I've got daughters. I, I know how these things work. It, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Um, I have one more person that I'm out. If they um, if they accept, 
Magumbo, I'm trying to add you if you accept, then you're the last person, then you go. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say much. Uh, people, they know who yeah, I am, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm the one uh, me I was talking about, um, the lady who was raped when I was only eight. And uh, I find out, Kuti, uh, because Rakai Tikakudara, there is not much help you can get. And in Oto is, you know, Rova, there is nothing, a panel, you know, you know, go Rova. Rakai Tika, because Wakanya for so many years, and it's not of Zangonya Rakwa. You know what? Yeah. How, well, like, like what we are doing now, we can talk, but it's not helping me. It's not doing yeah. anything. People, they come and say, oh, no, we can help you. We can help you. We can do this, but there's nothing. There's nothing. Big people, they get away with it. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's all I can say because the, there is no help. As much as we can talk, we can open our mouth, and, but there is no help up there. There is no help. That's when I know there is no help. We can talk, we can hashtag whatever, but no help. There is no help whatsoever. Yeah, that's all I can say. My sister, thank you very much. Thank you for your courage. You know, like you said. Uh, it's not easy. Um, it's not easy to talk about some of these things, and, and I think it, it is brave of some some of our sisters who are coming up and telling us some of these ones. I think it, my my whole thing is that there may not be a help, but I think there there needs to be less of us complicit with some of these things happening. We need to be more realistic as um as people, and how we care for each other, uh, 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 you know, as a society. Um, if we allow women abuse if we allow abuse in public forums if we allow uh, abuse on twitter if we allow um if we allow abuse on facebook if we allow women to be objectified called whores our mothers our wives our our, our siblings then our society is going to keep descending into a space where we see people like that who are very broken and hurt so i think i'm very sad it's very sad for me um so yeah it's been good chatting. Thank you guys for joining me. I know the conversation is going to keep going on. Um, I, I strongly suggest you, if you want to keep talking about some of these issues, people like me are very good accounts to follow. People like Brian Mupa are very good accounts to follow. Um, I know Sister Olinda Chapel is very passionate about some of these issues. I really hope that they continue to, um, I hope that they continue to push this issue and not uh, die. You know, people like Olinda can easily get five times the numbers I get. I'm just talking maybe from my own little side perspective. I'm hoping that some of you bigger names and bigger accounts can actually keep pushing some of these issues forward. So thank you very much for joining me. I shall go and uh, cuddle my bae, uh, tell her she's lovely, tell her she's special, tell her I love her. Um, and rightfully so, you know, because I think that's where we should be. Later, guys.